Well, I think Saru, uh, uh, he's been on a tra trajectory of one promotion after another, it feels like, uh, and for he's reaching a point and maybe an age and a maturity and a wisdom level where he might be um, asked to come be a guest speaker at Starfleet Academy, <laughs> perhaps. <laughs> I, I would love for uh, Captain Saru and Cleveland Booker to do an away mission together. To get together? Yeah. We never did. Yeah, I think <laughs> that just would have been glorious. No, well, yeah, <laughs> that yeah. That would be really amazing. Yeah. And I think Cleveland Booker would be very impressed by Saru's ability on the battlefield. Yeah, uh, didn't you love seeing season four? Can I, <laughs> with uh, the slow burn of this of this romance, it's, it was like a, a British frock drama, you know, <laughs> where they're, dare they even touch each other's hand. Well, at the last episode of season four, we finally held hands and the crowds went nuts. <laughs> so that was so, so sweet to see such an innocent love story unfolding. Well, it will continue to unfold more in, in season five. Where does it go? I don't want to give it all away, but, um, but yes, they're, uh, they, they face their challenges. The closer you get, the more, the more conflict you might find too in places you never thought to look for it. Um, well, with, with Saru's um, career advancement pr opportunities coming and how he weighs that out against his relationship with Tarina, can they work in, in unison? Can we all do this together uh, and, and get the, the most out of career and relationship and love? I think they'll, they'll, they're going to find a way. I hope so. Yes, and I, I'm, I feel that much more enriched having played this character. He's an individual who just has a supernatural level of empathy. And, um, uh, you know, without sounding too uh, wistful here, I, I believe that we can all benefit from that on this planet more, hmm. having a bit more em empathy towards each other. I mentioned this earlier, being, being curious without being judgmental. And as far as it goes with being um, changed, I definitely feel like a better human being because I know how my little efforts can make a big impact in someone else's life in the most positive way. Mm. I, I've heard it said b before that uh, we make all of our decisions in life based in either fear or love. Mm -hmm. uh, Saru mm -hmm. made all of his early decisions on this show out of fear. Mm -hmm. And he's come to a place where now he has courage and, and confidence and fear is a thing of the past. He makes his decisions based out of love now. Mm -hmm. And he does not live under the, the cloud of fear and anxiety. And I've had so many fans from our audience who have contacted me to say that Saru has helped them through their own journey with anxiety, depression, and fear. And so that, uh, that's been such a gorgeous um, metamorphosis to watch happen. And I've been, I, I, I want to be like Saru when I grow up. Mm. With a determined, headstrong partner, I'll give a more wider berth answer, which is to um, empower them to be the best version of themselves and never stop dating. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess I'll preface it with this, that the course of true love never did run smooth, but that substance of love, which is meaningful, is also worth fighting for. Um, it's a bit heartbreaking in the first episode where they go on an away mission and then after the storm, as it were, and it's nice and calm, Cleveland Booker and Michael Burnham are just left alone with each other in their silence. And she says, does it feel odd, ellipses, that I don't know how to be around you anymore? Mm. And that's a major shift in their relationship because these two were completely at peace with being in each other's presence with silence. And that's something that they had to fight for mm. to be able to continue to offer olive branches to each other to sustain this relationship. And I love how these writers are willing to embrace the many gray areas that comes when you are in a relationship. But then also the joy, because there is so much joy. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a revelation which completely pulls the rug from underneath his feet and, and floors him because it's so substantial, but then it, it, it's so complicated at the same time. You have to remember that this man is a work in progress, healing from grief day by day by day. And then now this massive spanner is thrown into the works and he has to unpack that on the go, figure it out. It, it, it's, hopefully it will bring out the best in him. 
and I'll say this, as he's been afforded a lot of grace, I think he's now in a position to afford this said individual the same level of grace because they're going to need it too. Mm. Yeah, well, you know, uh, my character Saru started on the planet Kaminar as a as an underling species that was being controlled by a, a predator species, and they were culling us and deciding when we were going to die as mercy killings, they said, and we're, we went along with it somehow. Going from that to exploring and finding his way to communicate with the starship and getting taken away like a refugee and then becoming part of Starfleet, the first Kelpian ever to be a high-ranking officer on a ship. It's like boom, 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 possibilities mm -hmm. and hope for the future. It's like he's a shining example that no matter what your beginnings, humble as they may be, you can go any which way from there with, with hope in your heart for sure. I think hope gives purpose. You know, and I think that, that when we die isn't when this, when we, quote to quote Hamlet, when we leave our mortal coil. I believe we die when we lose hope. And I think the biggest asset you can have is to have hope, because hope leads to purpose. And Cleveland Booker finds his purpose again yeah. in season five. It's funny, I was, I, I was a very anxious, nervous kid who uh, felt he didn't belong in any room that he was walking into. That's, that, those are my beginnings as a human being. So coming into a Kelpian character who kind of feels the same way, the writers gave me the, the, the background on him, it's like, wow, I can relate to that right now, you know, no study involved. <laughs> and, and, um, and finding him, uh, Suru, on the bridge of the ship with this younger uh, crew that he kind of mentors and they're theirs and, and pats on the back, attaboys, and, and you know, he, he's, he's good at that, at that fatherly sort of thing. And having lost my own father when I, in real life when I was 18 years old, I kind of wanted to step up and be, uh, be something for people that, young people. Uh, and now that I'm in my 60s, most people are younger than me, so it's like been kind of, kind of uh, so it's, it's, I'm, a, I'm a hugger and a petter, and, uh, and that's just where I find myself naturally falling. And so the convention circuit and the fans that come with this franchise are the most beautiful people mm -hmm. and so loyal and such, such a true family that they have formed that I am really, really honored to be a part of as the weird old uncle. Ha, 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 ha.